The number one question, if you get a cancer diagnosis, the same question that I would have, right, is how long am I gonna live with this diagnosis? For the most part, stages one to three, you're still hoping for cure. It's oftentimes curative intent, but stage four or metastatic, which means it's left where it originated and gone different places, everyone wants to know what is my survival. The most difficult thing or challenge that I have in talking to patients today is that most of those survival percentages, not most of them, all of them, are in the past, right? They're retrospective. You're looking at averages on what happened with the cancer treatments that were available over five, 10, 15 years. Some of them will tell you survivals that in 2010 are published from the 15 years prior. So please understand that when you're looking at an overall survival, number one, you're gonna look right in the middle to see what the average is, that, that that's of all the therapies that aren't necessarily around today, right? We have so many new therapies that have come out in targeted therapy, actionable mutations, immunotherapy, CAR T therapy, cellular therapy, all of these things that weren't present in the 2000s. Number two, when you're looking at that curve and you see that one number, that applies or doesn't apply to 99% of people because it's split in the middle. That other 99% are either on the left side, and it can be as early as like the one year to you know three, four years, if we're talking about five years being average, or it could be from five to nine years. So 99%, that number doesn't apply to. What is important is, like all of us, if you say, what is the survival for any of us? It's 82 years old, right? And, and that's just how long people survive in this country of the United States. You wanna do everything you can, presumably, to be on the right side of that curve. But we know realistically that there are a lot of things that we can and don't influence that unfortunately put us on the left side of that curve. And not everyone sees 82 years old. The same thing applies to cancer. There's so many things that we've learned in just the last two years that apply to where you fall on that curve. Some of which we're in control, right? Making sure you get the therapies, making sure you know about all the therapies, being healthy, etc. But a lot of the ones are things that we're only learning are so important. What are some of the inherited stuff that you have? BRCA mutations, because BRCA mutations qualify you for certain therapies. Lynch syndrome, all of these things we're learning have influence that we never knew about, oftentimes when you're looking at that average survival. On top of that, we're learning new actionable, mutational, tailored therapies, precision therapies that were not applicable to that average survival. And again, I would, the same thing, go to see what the average survival is. And that's okay, as long as we consider all of these variables. One of the most important things that you can do, which is recommended across the board, is to get mutational testing, next-gen sequencing, molecular profiling, all of these, all of the drugs, the targeted drugs and therapies that can attack the tumor that, again, didn't exist in the 2000s. The only way to know that is to get that testing on your tissue type. It's not from your blood, even though actually now it can be, but for the most part, the tissue sent. And the second thing is, look for trials. Trials are what made those drugs come about that changed survivals hugely in HER2 positive breast cancer, in mutated lung cancers like EGFR. It literally increased it by years because people were able to get on the trial and see that it worked amazingly. And at Xcures, we wanna help enable you access that data. Is there something that exists? It doesn't matter who's doing it or where it is. Are there trials that show drugs that are very precise and targeted that could potentially have great efficacy in your tumor? If you go to Xcures.com, either as a provider to see if there's anything left for your patients that could be well tolerated or promising, or as a patient or a family member, that's a service that's provided that will empower you with those mutations and hopefully be able to give you access to a therapy that otherwise isn't yet approved, but hopefully will help many people in the future.